uh, give it to you, Brother Donald, because last week I didn't get to give it to you, and I teed up it just perfectly. Uh, Brother Donald, these radio moments are excessively important, and uh, uh, Brother Donald uh, uh, has uh, uh, enhanced his own style at uh, setting someone up, so uh, at different times, of C. Miles has it talked about the boule with people who don't want to go too deep on it, but when somebody lines him up on it to really put it on a wake him up track, he goes uh, ape shit and backwards. So, uh, <laughs> Brother Donald had been cut off before uh, trying to mention the boule. In fact, now he's banned because he's a sucker, third world conspiracy talker. Uh, uh, right, right. Perpetrator, sucker, perpetrator. Right. <laughs> so, so, in tribute to Donald, I want to play Donald setting up C. Miles on the boule, who is a host at the local radio station here who's had an impact and uh, uh, but he has mixed messages. Uh, he is a Greek, uh, has been involved. We found out that Brother Donald could tell you uh, what. Tell him, Brother Donald, what Sorry. you just found out. Oh, um, uh, what, what was his father was in? Uh, his father was a guardsman. Is it was a what? Guardsman. A guardsman. A guardsman is the group that guards the boule. It's only in 16, 17 cities now. Only one city west of the Mississippi. Uh, o. T. Wells is the head of the guardsman. I had the pleasure of meeting O. T. Wells at the Black Caucus sitting up in the corner with a big cowboy hat on with some big double, triple rings with diamonds all over them. And the black people was coming over there saying, can I have a second with you? And bowing. And they was ridiculing him and making fun of him, but they was literally kissing his hand. So somebody told me, he said, that's, that's O.T. Wells? I said, O.T. Wells? That's the head of the guardsman. My man Oglesby, who's been selling my case all over the country, that's his cousin. Swore he didn't know nothing about the bull later Oglesby. So when Oglesby shows him a tape, but people sell my stuff to the perpet sell myself to the perpetrators so they can inform they can be the perpetrators informant on my information. So everybody sells me so for a hundred dollars. He wrote all the boule for a hundred dollars they could get a package of Steve Coakley tape to find out what I think about them, you know, dumb shit, but it's got it sold thousands of dollars worth of stuff. So okay, so uh so here he goes, OT Wells at the Black Caucus. I get to meet him for the first time and um uh, real funny conversation, uh, but I told him I knew his boy Broadway. That's his boy out of Philly, Broadway, who was working with Dale Jones when they first promoted me to Philly. No, 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 Bobby, this is tribute to you. Beautiful sister, beloved. John in Baltimore. Hey, brother, see my life. You doing? This is like Big D. Man, I was down there yesterday, man. Go flag, flag, burn it. No, I mean the. Uh, 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 Mitchells in Maryland, 
And you talk about the Hughes and all these other strong men that I have here. And that is the same thing. You put and you talk about the This family is the family of the family of sons here in Washington practicing medicine over at Howard, I believe, or teaching at Howard. But that's a strong, civic-minded, real-deal family. They practice for, like, turkeys and...
to become. Okay. And I'll turn it over to Brother Donald. Um, uh, real quickly on the latest thing that happened on the, with the uh, Korean uh, store. Um, I just happened to go to a, a so-called educational uh, forum Saturday. I was sitting home listening, and I heard this one person talk. I said, well, let me go on down here. And I went down there. It was something like 20 people in the road. Or the total six, about five on the post. And um, a brother mentioned to me that there was going to be a meeting the next day, uh, that Sunday. Uh, and uh, 27, 27 <coughs> East North Avenue at the Korean, <coughs> Korean Center. And I called up uh, DJ and called up Kyle Levin, asked them that they want to have some fun. <laughs> they want to have some fun, so we're going to go to the Korean Center. <laughs> and well, before we got inside, some other folks had already went up, to, went up, had went up, went in already, and they did not want them in there. And uh, once we got in there, the meeting was going um, pretty cool. It was being hosted, being facilitated by uh, no good, dirty, honky cracker by the name of uh, A. Robert Cuffman. Who was the man who set up the meeting? A. Robert Cuffman. He's the white guy living in the black neighborhood. He's the white guy living in the black neighborhood. The Jewish guy. Jew. So-called Jewish guy. So-called Jewish. Yeah. So Jewish. Yeah. Who's that? Friend, everybody gonna come in there, having gone to the newspaper and condemn y'all for boycotting them. Yeah, I had a paper back in there. So now he's showing up as the mediator. He's the mediator. And uh, Cuffman, um, I had uh, ran into Cuffman earlier at, at a so-called CIA drug thing they had in Baltimore, Dunbar High School. Mm -hmm. So I had to bust him in front of about three, three, four, three, four hundred people in, the, in, this, in this area. I asked him, have, have he been to the school? Mm -hmm. And he said, no. I said, well, how can you write an article condemning people and calling them racist when you never went up to the store to investigate? And I said, I should smack you. So at that point, we ready to throw down. Yeah. And 
uh, it got to the point that they were very insulting, uh, they were very uh, nasty, they were very rude, and it got to the point that they realized that what they, we had said to them that you have made a mistake and let this man uh, agitate you into being, becoming confrontational with us. And if you want the confrontation, we're going to give you the confrontation. So we got to the point that uh, the uh, doctor that was there uh, happened to be, she happened to be the vice president of the uh, Baltimore County NAACP. I didn't know what the title had mentioned it to me, but she had hit the white, hit the Korean man in the nose. In the face. <laughs> and I said, well, let me go over there and go get Dr. George because she got a coat on. She's going to hit somebody. And, and, uh, it got to the point that it just, it just blew out of proportion and the Korean community uh, realized that they were in trouble. And at this point they're still in trouble because they have uh, resurrected something that they should have let remain dead. They should have remained, let just remain how it was. It was dead. The issue was gone. And now it's the point that they are, are terrified because they have put themselves in a situation from their rudeness and their uh, 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 their honorary white attitude that they have insulted us in such a way this time that folks are going to shut down every Korean store in Baltimore.
Well, don't, he told me it don't really get cold down here now. A couple of more degrees on Saturday, shit was cold. Right? <laughs> I'm from right, Chicago, it almost got windshield, was about zero, it's about cooking, you know. So, uh, as a result of that, uh, in very in, in very much appropriate spirit, uh, and not uh, taken the wrong way because uh, we did have to discuss it so that it wasn't taken in the wrong way. Uh, a couple of people called and raised questions about Robert and a coat. And so a couple of people went out and actually bought a coat. So uh, I don't, I don't, uh, 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 I just want to do this now. So they need to come on up. They need to come on, bring it. Come on with it. Come on with it. Come get it. Oh, you already got it? Where the coat is? dispatched 
to Marilyn Monroe in California because she kept calling the White House, calling the White House, writing the White House, calling people in the media, saying that her lover, John Kennedy, wasn't giving her appropriate attention. These calls were so persistent, and she knew the, the, the private numbers, that it compelled Jack to send Robert to California to hush her up. And I know about those sessions because I worked for a mayor who had a wife that had a cocaine habit. And I remember when Mayor Sawyer used to send me out when his wife, who would need ten, twelve thousand dollars at a time, would come to City Hall butt naked in a fur coat. Get, and, and the police guards downstairs would call up to the mayor to see them. They had two elevators in City Hall. One was down and one was up. They stayed down and up and open with two policemen in it at all times just for the mayor to move. Right. And uh, they would hit that lobby and say, the mayor's wife is downstairs. The mayor would hit me on the beeper, 911, get in here. My wife is downstairs. Here's an envelope. Give it to her. Get in the cab. Take her home. And I would jump in the cab, make the $30 cab ride with her onto her home. But this is something that he had to deal with. It was his ex-wife. They weren't together. But at different times when she wanted attention and money to do what she wanted to do, she knew just what to do to put the mayor in a compromising position. And that would compel him to send someone that he trusted. Now, unlike Robert Kennedy, because it, it really wasn't that thing to me, uh, uh, Robert Kennedy goes to sit with... Jane with Marilyn Monroe ends up sleeping with her. She, babbling on the phone, which is being wiretapped by Gag Hoover, says she can't tell the difference between Robert and John. She loves them both. Now she's calling both their houses. She's calling both their offices. And she wants a Kennedy, and she wants them now. Now Kennedy, promiscuity, he got several women. One of his women is Angie Dickerson. I'm sure some of you all remember her, right? Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, what was the movie Police she played in? Police Woman. Show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Many members of the white press of 63, the all-male white press of 63, uh, envied John Kennedy, who in his sexual escapades were their wildest fantasy. Mm -hmm. So they assisted his promiscuity. J. Edgar Hoover, who was a known deviant. Yeah. In fact, there's evidence in several books, and even in this one, Lyndon Johnson called him that queer bastard. <laughs> now, Johnson lived next door to Hoover right here in Washington. But Hoover was woven deeply into oil deals that Clint Murchison had cooked up out of Texas. Murchison had owned the Dallas Cowboys at that time. He's the one that made Cowboys a national team. <coughs> Heard something click up here. Oh. Okay. All right. So, thank you very much. So, um, uh, uh, Murchison, who in the movie Executive Action, if you go back and see this movie on the John Kennedy assassination, there's a movie with Burton Lancaster and some more people, Dan Duryea, they all reenact the men who planned Kennedy's assassination. I highly recommend that video called Executive Action. How many of you all saw it? It's Executive Action. Uh, but in that movie, the guy's ranch that they are at is Clint Murchison. He's the man that gets Hoover, Nixon, and all the others who benefited from Kennedy's death to meet at his ranch to plan the details of the assassination. Even in the movie JFK, that meeting is reenacted. The meeting by which the Triangle of Crossfire is established. Now, um, Judith Campbell was Kennedy's other girlfriend. Now, what was unique about Judith Campbell was that she liked to sleep with men of power. So she thought John Sam Giancana in Chicago was a man of power. She admitted she thought he was ugly, but she loved sleeping with him for the gifts that he gave, which is depicted in many of the movies that the mafia have that they run, Casino, uh, many of these are uh, the Goodfellows. Right. Uh, you always see that mafia moment where they're buying the excessively large diamond rings, the over furry coats, the loud uh, Cadillacs and other right. things to share with their women. Uh, and so there's this tradition to uh, promiscuity and gifts. So Judith Campbell was sleeping with Sam Giancana, but she was sleeping with John Kennedy too. Mm -hmm. 
They were sharing this woman. So she took messages back and forth between Jim Connor of Chicago and Kennedy of Hyannisport, Massachusetts. And these messages were confidential. They would be sealed. She'd say on many occasions she knew when disagreements were, comments were made in rooms. But she also knew that Jim Connor was wiretapping her sex with Kennedy and that Hoover was wiretapping the sex with Kennedy. Arthur paid $100,000 for some tapes on the sex with Robert Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. So you had at a period in America where home life and family were more excessively important than they ever were now. Uh, this is before, uh, 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 remember the candidate who got knocked out of the race for the woman sitting in his lap that wasn't his wife, uh, Gary Hart, who was a good candidate. He was a good senator. He was on the Intelligence Committee. But he lost out for the woman sitting on his lap. So Kennedy, and all the photographs, and Kennedy had sex all over the world. A scandal broke out in Britain. Prime Minister McMillan, uh, in fact, the scandal was called for the record, so that I could say the scandal specifically. It was called... Uh, um, uh, the defense minister of Britain had slept with a woman uh, and uh, she had been a part of a Soviet vice ring. Now, let's go back to the book Silent Coup. Silent Coup, about the behind the scenes of the Watergate case, says that really what started the Watergate cooking was a madam's book that John Dean's wife had who used to be a prostitute. John Dean was the one who allegedly squealed on everybody. But John Dean, more than anything, told one story to get the story of his wife out the story, the book Silent Coup. But it talks about the precipitation of Watergate being a sex scandal. I bring that up because I bring it back into the uh, Kennedy thing. And this, this is a good book. John's got a lot of good uh, used books back there. <coughs> And uh, he got to get some more books for me now on that little that little bitch, Roy Coyne. Roy Coyne, you ought to see the picture. Little Weasley, white attorney, looked like Truman Capone, who was homosexual, who was one of Hoover's lovers. He was Hoover's bitch. And I made a point. I, mean, I never called a woman a bitch, but I'm, I'm on Hoover. Hoover is the bitch. And Hoover witnessed and participated in the assassination of John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Malcolm X, and Martin King. The bitch murdered people. And it was his bitch pathology. It was his bitch pathology that compelled him to murder. For they all knew his pathology, and he, he in his in his height of his sexual deviancy, you remember the little remark in the Malcolm X movie where the FBI yeah. is sitting there on the table, yeah. Dick Gregory always mentioned this, where they say, boy, he, he make Martin King look like a saint. Sure, yeah. right. You know, that, that whole yeah. FBI thought that, well, damn, here's a man who ain't uh, prom uh, prom promiscuous, uh, uh, but they went on and killed him anyway. So, so, uh, uh, and remind me to tell you about how black people loved Hoover for so many years because they thought he was a Negro. Black people actually thought that Gay Edgar Hoover was a Negro, and I'm going to pass you around this picture. In fact, I just better show you now while I mentioned it. That part of the way black people got sucked in into supporting Hoover was that he was actually sent out into the black community, and he was sent out. Uh, black people said, you can fool some people, but you can't fool us. That's a Negro. Look at the brown shade of Hoover. Hoover's over here. Yeah. I'm going to come over there for you. You'll see the brown shade of Hoover. Tell me uh, how you got it, buddy. Uh, I think the pictures are on this side. In fact, he looks like, like, he looks like a Negro. Yeah, you, you can see very well he got this dark shade. And when I show you Hoover's picture over here with uh, another group of white men, you'll see the shade of Hoover being much different than the other white men in the pictures. Uh, ugly bastard bitch he was. They <laughs> <laughs> see Roy Coyne does AIDS. Huh? Roy Coyne died of AIDS. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Oh, another special treat. Um, uh, I, I uh, ran into uh, Samuel Yeti, uh, who wrote The Choice. Uh, how many of you all got the book The Choice at home? Please pick it up and uh, read it. Uh, he agreed to be our uh, the Tuesday night guest on a Tuesday that we chose, and you need to tell me what Tuesday you'll be ready. Well, we'll come in and interview him about the choice, the update in the choice, and some things in the choice that are very uh, pertinent right now. Uh, he was willing to come in and do it for free. And uh, here's the other picture, buddy, that I want to make sure we get in the record. Uh, Sean, what do you think? He looked negroid. 
He looks messed up, don't he? Okay. Ah. And look at what he look like. He look awful anyway, don't he? He look like the devil. So you're right. See, it's all in shades. Uh, who would put a naked picture of Marilyn Monroe up in his basement to uh, quell to quell the perception that he was a homosexual? Uh, Hoover's homosexuality was just deep. The gangster boy used to rent out a uh, set of suites at the Bob Sheridan in New York. Hoover would leave his lover, uh, who was one of the ex. You need it again. Okay, Clyde Colson would leave his lover in Washington, who he felt was getting old and ugly, and take the train, take the Amtrak by himself up to New York, uh, would get picked up by an FBI agent in New York, uh, and would be taken to the hotel. There he would dress in women's clothes. Now there's a Jewish woman who had married two men who turned out to be homosexual, who was in on, uh, they used to want her to look at them while they were all dressed up. Now let's go back to the Kennedy assassination. Let's go back to Clay Shaw. Let's go back to David Ferry. Let's go back to that part of the movie when they dressed like Roman soldiers doing each other in the butt before they go out and kill Kennedy. Check? Yeah. Yeah. You, you with me there? Yeah. Okay. Now the point I'm trying to bring up is we probably have underestimated the role sexual deviancy plays in power dynamics. Uh, this town, especially as I learned when I came here, because I told you the W.O.L. shit was sexual, and I got a little small tribute to Ernest White, who died. I told you all that it's... Didn't you all hear that he died? You all hear about W.O.L.? He died No, 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 no. Didn't you hear Bernie McCain announce it a week ago? Y'all, none of y'all heard that. Huh? See, my about two weeks ago. Did you not hear that? Huh? Yeah, they said just pretend you can call. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Because I, when I, in fact, just to show you how I went, when I tuned in, I had heard him say we would give our prayers to Ernest White so forth. And then by the time Lisa Mitchell's show had come down, they had thought they had said Dorothy Height was dead. So they turned Ernest White into Dorothy Height. And they had somebody call in from Dorothy Height was at the White House and announced that she was getting all these calls at the National Council of Negro Women because they thought that Dorothy Height, not Ernest White, was, was dead or something. Now you tell me they ain't even Ernest White dead. He's not dead. <clears throat> okay, God bless. But, 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 I'm telling y'all, when I come here, there was certain press. I used to stay right upstairs. I wouldn't stay in nobody's house. I wouldn't fraternize with the people I was working around because there was something <clears throat> unique about the offering mm -hmm. of these relationships. And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. now that I understand what I understand, mm -hmm. I better understand how they keep the town. Yeah, I tried to tell you before, the town is kept on secrets. Right. It ain't always, everybody out here ain't always political. Um, and uh, we go all the way back to the Berry thing and some more stuff. But before I get lost in all of that, I'm going to cut all of that. I'll come back to some of that. Um, uh, but I just want to go back to that Hoover's homosexuality was called on tape by the Mafia boys, uh, the Costello boys in New York, the Giancana boys, Maya Lansky, especially Maya Lansky, who offered Hoover Jewish boyfriends for company. And they even mentioned that they would bring these uh, muscle-bound young white boys in who would play with Hoover, would, when they played with him, always made him wear rubber gloves. And uh, that Hoover would dress up in a black dress, high heels, and the whole world. Just sick, sick, decrepit shit. This is even before the, I mean, I ain't even going to get to the racetrack this week. I'm just going to leave it at the Park Sheridan where a whole lot of people had to be paid off to keep this homosexuality a secret. Now remember, Hoover goes and gets all these files on senators. Uh, congressmen, uh, mayors, uh, he gets all the files he can get on everybody and he uses that information against everyone else. As, as his, as, because every president that wanted to get rid of him couldn't get rid of him because Hoover had tracked his pathology. Being pathological his damn self. And that all of the men presidents knew Hoover was gay but tolerated his homosexuality. They never played it against them, but he used their sex acts against them at every single turn he could. 
Uh, Cecil Rhodes was homosexual. The whole thing about him never having a woman and throwing the boys off the cliff after he had sex with them. It's a whole nother story. <clears throat> That's something you're going to have to go back and measure about the role and impact it. Hmm? King James? <laughs> I didn't go back. Okay. Anyway, uh, the, uh, I wanted to tell you the name of the British guy. I wanted to tell you uh, British... Uh, Britain's Minister of War, John Profumo, P-R-O-F-U-M-O. He uh, confessed to having slept with a woman simultaneously involved in a Soviet, with a Soviet naval attaché in London. He resigned, but the crisis continued. The government of Prime Minister McMillan, who had backed Profumo to the end, was shaken to its foundation. The press, meanwhile, fueled the controversy with daily revelations about orgies and adultery of the British establishment. Now, that made me go back. Go back to Prince Charles, Lady Di, uh, and this other one who married uh, to uh, Prince Henry or whatever, Ferguson. Back to the prince with someone, the, the lady with somebody, the queen with us. They're all over the place, right? And for sex to break up, uh, this is one marriage that can never be broken in the public. I mean, I just want you to pick up on the way to move of this thing that sex was uh, a breakup of a marriage between a prince and a princess or a future king and his wife was deeply unheard of, but they not only broke it, but they all got busted everywhere, naked and everything else. I mean, it was like sex was a greater overthrower of their unity, the decadence, the Rome, come on now, Caliglia, uh, somewhere that this stage of white activity, this level of white activity, uh, uh, signal something on the horizon of the development or deformity of the white race. Uh, and I don't want to miss the role that sex, the role that sex is playing. And of course, Flint was put back out in the public, but his daughter, somebody came out and said he raped me, he raped the children, he raped everybody. And the movie is covering up his deviancy. Uh, but, uh, Huh? Paula Jones and Clinton, where her case ain't coming up to July, but everybody heard all day yesterday and all day the day before that he got what? Naked in front of her, showed himself and demanded sex. Mm -hmm. And that's all day. All day. I mean, it's, and again, again, the signal is check on the signal that this deformity is playing high in their ultimate impediment as a signal. Yeah. Just uh, hold it as a signal. Uh, uh, Kennedy had a, uh, Kennedy was sleeping with Jackie Kennedy's press secretary, uh, Paula Turnour. Paula Turnour. He was sleeping with her. So Jackie Kennedy's press secretary was sleeping with John Kennedy. Angie Dickinson was sleeping with John Kennedy. Judith Campbell was sleeping with John Kennedy. Marilyn Monroe was sleeping with John Kennedy. Maria Novotini. She was an Anglo Czech. Uh, personage who was a whore that had been hired for Kennedy by Peter Lawford. Go back to the movie Ocean's Eleven, where Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, uh, Fred, uh, Tom Conti, whatever his name was, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, robbed this Vegas, uh, they robbed a Vegas casino, the Rat Pack, they called them. Well, that Rat Pack, Peter Lawford and all them, look, Frank Sinatra was in the Manchurian Candidate, the movie that talked about the mind control killers that got taken off the market when Kennedy got assassinated. Right. But Sinatra was in the movie. Go back to the Godfather. Who was the singer whose career was floundering? Who the Godfather cut the horse's head off to get him in a movie? Yeah, the symbolism was it was Frank Sinatra. Remember Frank Sinatra's son getting kidnapped? Right. Uh, 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 there's a whole set of shit going on up in there. I don't want you to miss that had an um, impact on Martin King. And, uh, oh, hold on just one second, Doc. Uh, mm. Well, it's interesting because they keep talking about Ben Bradley is giving his reflections on these various scandals, but they ain't mentioning his family. They, they burned, and he and his wife burned her diary. Okay. Anybody familiar with this? Yeah. Anybody know the name? Anybody her know? name was Tony, I don't remember her last name. Anybody familiar with this? Y'all gotta help me look this up. Yeah. What is it? The, 
uh, Ben Bradley, who was the Washington Post's editor. Uh, you see him uh, denoted in the uh, 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 movie on deep cover, uh, All the President's Men. Uh, he's the editor that sends Woodward and Bernstein out to the White House. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got to find out her name. We need to get her name. You know anything about that, Brother Donald? Yeah, Ben Bradley got some autobiographies out there. We may need to grab one of them. He had one especially that was out about a year or two ago. I remember him being interviewed. President White was Sally Quinn. Sally Quinn is his present wife, right, right, who was, um, just had a baby at like 81 or something. Yeah, something like that, right, that's right, that's right, he's old. Anyway, we need to check on that. Um, uh, so, uh, when the scandal's going on in Britain, the problem was, was that Kennedy had slept with one of the w women as well. So he asked for all the cables to be sent to him about the scandal going on in England, because he knew if they pushed hard enough. Then all of a sudden, one of the papers in England said that a high U.S. government official is involved with this sex scandal. So Kennedy then went and had to beg Gag or Hoover, who had to leak the story. He leaked the story. Made Kennedy come to him and beg that the story be killed. Hoover says, I'll kill the story, but you know, I'm close to retirement age. You're going to have to do that executive order that reinstates me as FBI director. He was finally worried. Robert Kennedy was the first attorney general ever to put, uh, to take Hoover's direct relationship away from the president. Hoover only met with John Kennedy six times between 61 and 63. That was Kennedy's presidency. He only met with Hoover alone six times, two times in the last year. Uh, uh, in June of 63 was the last time he met with him before he died. And in that meeting, Hoover brought up three things he had on Kennedy. This was a deep meeting. All the Kennedy memoirs reflect on the private meeting that Hoover had with Kennedy, when Kennedy said he would never meet with Hoover again, he had this one last meeting with him, and at this meeting, Hoover brought up three things he had. He said, I know in the 51, that lady you slept with over in England, who you paid $500,000 to, to kill the story. So I know about that. So he went on and ran that. Kennedy didn't say, well, I know you were a bitch and this and that. He just, he, but the thing is, Kennedy couldn't help himself. No matter what the fuck was going on, couldn't fucking help himself. <laughs> he, see, that's this deep thing you got to pick up on. He could not help himself. Robert Kennedy could not help himself. He's a genius. This is deep, and they bone. They done floated high enough. Now, the old man, old man Kennedy had cut all these deals with the mafia to get his boys elected. One set of the mafia wanted LBJ coming out of Texas. He ran against Kennedy in 1960. Who and all have helped LBJ? They tried to blackmail Kennedy at the convention. But Kennedy passed around enough money that he overwhelmed the Johnson boys. So once Kennedy went, went, won, then came the white male session where they made him take LBJ as the vice president. And LBJ said, hey, you know, I knew I'd be president. I studied it. See, one out of every four presidents, they die in office. So I figured out that this, the way this wheel went, this was the one who was going to die in office. Because remember, I, yep. I had gone all, yep. all eight years, yep. right? Yep. So he yep. said, fuck it, I got this. And so that whole relationship. And <laughs> and what he is that now, remember, Hoover only had five black FBI agents in 63, and four of them were his chauffeurs. He had a chauffeur in Florida. He had a chauffeur in Washington. So when they, when, when they put pressure on him, Robert Kennedy come and said, you got to get FBI agents. He went and made his servants FBI agents. <laughs> he did. Only one of the five original black FBI agents actually did work, and they had him working out of the uh, immigration office. Uh, where Hoover made his, uh, made, his, uh, made his spurs working in immigration. Oh, it's a heavy, heavy thing. Heavy thing. So now... Oh, 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 I don't want to mix this. I had this in perfect order. Okay, let me go back. Let me go back. So, so, uh, what happened now? So, 1963, New Year's Eve, Hoover, near 70, needs an executive order to remain head of the FBI. Uh, John Kennedy tells everybody, he said, look, after I win the second term, Hoover's ass is out of here. Now, he had just had a big disruption to get rid of uh, uh, Dulles, who was CIA man, took the Bay of Pigs to get rid of him. He went right on to the Warren Commission and finished Kennedy ass off, but that's another story. Um, uh, so so uh, Kennedy says, look, we're going to get his ass soon as we win the election. Kennedy was forecast to win in the polls. 
Nixon knew that Kennedy was going to win. That's what he went to Rockefeller said, man, it's in the book RN. Say, hey, this Kennedy going to win the next election. Rockefeller said he's not even going to be around for the next election. Mm. That's a very key sentence. It's in, the, in Nixon's memoir called RN. Very important. I got the paperback edition, which is two, two full paperbacks. Very important page. Uh, and uh, when the Copley book comes, you're going to see that moment footnoted. Uh, Johnson's uh, fear of the CFR and the Eastern Establishment, who he felt was going to come and take away. Now, the Ford Foundation had a program called the Fund for the Republic, and they were busting on Hoover for the, for the con communist scare. Communism, Hoover used communism. See, Hoover could never find the mafia because the mafia had the pictures. So every time they wanted to bust organized crime, Hoover didn't see none. He, he set up a task force and asked for them to gain the names of the top ten mafia in their areas. And when they collected the names, Hoover didn't even want them. He only wanted to quell the pressure that he had. See, the word Costa Nostra or the, uh, the mafia or all these names had not been certified by the government yet. So uh, Hoover would never see them. Hoover was fighting communism. you got to understand the option that communism gave Hoover so he didn't have to do mafia. Mafia was waking up everywhere, but Hoover was getting big-time Mafia money. Every time Lansky and them bought into the casinos in Vegas, every time Murchison got another oil company, Hoover got, I mean, when Hoover died, he had $1.2 million estate, some shit like that. His uh, lover had $3.2 million estate, he left all his shit to his lover, and uh, they, they made over 40000 no year in the FBI. Mm. And he had no other job but the FBI. So you can see what kind of wealth they had amassed on those tips. Uh, now, um, so uh, Hoover, Hoover says uh, uh, Kennedy had sent out that he'd like John Connolly to replace Hoover. So what they do, they said, Johnson said, look, I'm going to have to put your ass in the car with Kennedy. Because <laughs> Hoover, who's my godfather, want to make sure your ass die in the assassination attempt because he heard you're going to be FBI director and you was dumb enough to say you'd do it. So, so you can see they put Connolly in the car to make sure who made sure his ass. And of course, the magic bullet went through Connolly's wrist, through his thigh, through the back seat, through Kennedy's head, all of, and then it found it without a dent in it. The magic bullet. And of course, Conley always says Jeff swore that there was a conspiracy. Uh, now, so Hoover, in the spring and summer of 63, writes a memo to Kennedy. Says, uh, hey, I got that Pamela Tenor, uh shit with uh, you and Jackie's press secretary. Say, I got that uh, Alice uh, Perdom, uh, who's another uh, a Jewish woman. Uh, uh, no, 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 Perdom is the British man. Uh, no, no, Perfumo. Per Profumo is the British scandal. Uh, Alice Perdom is another one of his mistresses that he had in 51 who was in a Soviet vice ring. If it had ever come out that Kennedy had slept with a woman who had been hooked with the Soviets, he would have been knocked out like the British defense minister was when they found out he was a prostitute sent from the Soviets. Uh, uh, then uh, Hoover, and go back too, right? Because uh, look at the role, I, I put down all of these things, the only one I didn't mention, the role that sex played in Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X. It was sex, but on a different angle. It wasn't Malcolm having the sex, it was Malcolm fighting the promiscuity. Promiscuity, how do you say that? So, so it was there, but it was from a different angle. The role sex played in the assassinations of the 60s. That's a whole other lecture. Now, uh, page 306. It's interesting that this was page 306. Who was in room 306 the night he died? King. King. So on page 306 of this book on Hoover is John Kennedy. They, in June of 63, when was the march on Washington? August, August 63. August. When was Kennedy killed? 22nd November 63. Okay, so you got right. June, then June, August, November, right? Uh, June 63, uh, Kennedy has all the civil rights leaders come to the White House so they could find a bill, civil rights bill. They were doing civil rights thrust. The bill didn't pass until Kennedy was killed. Johnson rolled the bill in on the death of Kennedy. But uh, Kennedy asked uh, Martin King to come out in the garden, the Rose Garden with him. And uh, King made a comment, and I remember reading another King thing. He said, you know, I was strange that Kennedy had to take me out in the Rose Garden. He said, that bastard, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, was wiretapping him, and I could tell he was scared of him. Mm. which scared the shit out of Martin King. 
to know that Kennedy was scared of the FBI director. Now, when was the memo looking for the person with a compelling personality who was going to replace Martin King after they had been groomed privately? When, when did that memo? When was that memo written? <laughs> Right. December of 63 was the memo that Hoover wrote announcing that the FBI was grooming someone to replace Mark King. We know that Jesse Jackson was that person. But what's deep about all this is that Jesse is what? Promiscuous. Part of what I knew about Jesse, the tolerance that Jesse Jackson had as his woman who tolerated his sexual escapades of Jesse, who had Roberta Black saying happy birthday to him right up here at the press club, just like Marilyn Monroe saying that she is John Kennedy. Remember it was my brother and buddy, Brother Fox, who picked up Roberta Black from the airport, who said Jackie Kennedy had to ride, and they sat there in the car, didn't say one word to each other all the way back to the Jackson house, where Jesse insisted that Roberta stay in the house. <laughs> Over here on T Street. That's right. right back here. Yeah, right back there. <laughs> at the party at the press club where you and Malik and them went down there. Okay. But Jesse's promiscuity and never had him meet the fate that all the others did. That was the thing back to the unique relationship that the, Jesse had financial problems. He misappropriated grants. He did all the things that all the people who got burnt for did with immunity. That's all this shit is weaving together now. And it's like weaving some tapes of mine together. Just just reading through these backdrops of the role deviancy played in manipulating the set. Uh, back in the Jesse coming to capitalize on Mary and Barry being drawn out for booty. <laughs> Which he would do drugs for to get. Because if the drugs wasn't enough, the drugs just wasn't enough. Dick Morris, presidential counselor, got the prostitute listening to the president on the phone. Check, lick your white woman told. <laughs> <laughs> then they found out he had children everywhere, and now all this shit is out, and his wife been left him. And he said, said, I'm sorry, I'm going to miss them shit, Joe. <laughs> but you got to, again, go back to that spot with David Ferry and them riding Clay Shaw's butt, yeah. who worked, been on 56 missions for the CIA down to the Dallas Trademark. Down there riding each other in Romans, remember with the gold all over their body? You remember that shit? Right. Had the gold paint on it. And, and they had the picture of them. All of them dressed there all weird, had that picture. When David Ferry and them said they never knew Clay Shaw, they was all in that little funky picture together. Now again, whoever can master the sexual tendencies of these people have been the master. When assassination was a last option, a person's personal weakness has been the greatest option. I always said that that Hoover, and this is all going to hook up because, let's go back, there was a dude on the radio this week. The dude on the radio said that John Kennedy sent them motherfuckers to the moon and found out some shit about black people. Yeah. And that only he knew that shit, and they never went back to the moon after that, right? In fact, what happened to the last Apollo? Right. It almost blew up. That was the Apollo 13 movie. Ronnie Cox, the Irish boy, goes back and brings that shit back up. Did nobody go through with it? Ron Howard. Ron Howard. There we go. Ron Howard, who was Irish, who got urinated on for doing that other movie on the Irish with Tom Cruise and them, the fight movie. Yeah, they got, they pissed on all the Irish connections for that movie. But, but, the point of it is, is that the, the white guy comes on, uh, Hoagland, talking about Mars and the pyramids and all of that. And he comes down to this piece that John Kennedy had sent this moon trip up. And the moon trip was so significant that it may have been a cause for his death. All right? Okay. Now, let me just, let me hook this in. Hook this in. Y'all with me, y'all all right? Y'all got a minute? Yeah. What did they find? Well, we're going to hear this. For 100 years and had raped Egypt. And is he telling us between the lines what would be found. And already, 
and then uh, exposed. Already been exposed. Let me do this. You got a break right here, gentlemen, back in just a few moments on the network where information is power. Now, Lisa Mitchell had Hoagland on last week for a straight time. Mm -hmm. Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory was on phone from someplace else. Okay, and uh, uh, so, so, where information. so, uh, Hoagland is going through this uninterrupted dialogue about uh, Appreciate the time that you spent with us today. Bob and Dick Gregory on board as well. Looking at, and, and this is what we had been uh, building to looking at um, the information around and the misinformation around um, the um, uh, Giza uh, pyramid uh, believes that uh, there was a chamber, it was uh, said that there was a chamber beneath the Sphinx, but a lot of this misinformation getting us away from uh, what was known was there. Uh, it has been uh, predicted uh, that uh, the chamber uh, would be opened uh, and you through, uh, Richard, through uh, mathematical um, uh, the code, uh, the same code as looking at the, uh, the structure uh, of uh, the pyramids uh, here and on Mars, the uh, plaza, uh, looking at that, we're able to determine when uh, this chamber uh, would be uh, would be open and what uh, and what was, well, we found out what's contained in the chamber, what's, what's said to be contained, and you believe that uh, to be true, two by three meter room, the chamber that has been talked about that was actually inside the pyramid, not underneath, but inside uh, the pyramid, uh, a statue of a black man. But even going further to say that, uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of the gentleman who said it would be, that this is what... Dr. I.E.S. Edwards, who, I. E. S. Edwards. who was the keeper of antiquities, of Egyptian antiquities in the British Museum, the British Museum is a key player in all this because the British Museum basically is a repository of all of the antiquaries, the statues, the artifacts, the keepsakes that the British in their colonization efforts literally stole from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. They brought them all back to, to London and they're sitting there in the British Museum down in the stacks. <laughs> well, one of the interesting things I discovered was that when he was ambassador to England, John Kennedy's father, Joseph Kennedy, spent an awful lot of time at the British Museum, in particular talking to certain people. Now, the reason I know this is that one of our Enterprise Mission members heard me on the radio, and her grandfather was a guard at the British Museum. Wow. And she reported in his journals that Kennedy, John Gerald Kennedy's father, President of the United States' father, when he was in England, spent all this time discussing certain things particularly about Egypt with certain people, including in conversations this guard overheard. Which brings us to the connection between Egypt and John Kennedy and the missions to the moon. Mm -hmm. What we have discovered, and I will lay out for you and for Dick and for anyone else who's interested, is that we have now discovered, or rediscovered I should say, that the key Apollo insignia, the patch, which was the insignia under which we went to the moon, yeah. is in fact the Osiris-Orion connection to the pyramids at Giza. Wow. Okay, now let me stop you one second there. If you go, and, and I need to set up, I'm going to, uh, next Tuesday I'm going to close this off, but I need you all to decide what day of the week that you'd be willing to go into the house of the Mother Supreme. It has to be a Monday through Friday. And uh, you have to be able to go before 3 o'clock and uh, the purpose is, is that in the Masonic Temple, there's a Gag Hoover room. Mm -hmm. Next to the Gag Hoover room is the astronaut that went to the moon, who put the Masonic shit on the moon. Mm -hmm. The ones that went on the moon were all Masons, and all their artifacts are in there. I think we better go back and look at the things that they put in there, because I think it's something something we better catch. And yes, what's that? Right, he didn't want no pictures taken in the gag or hoover room, even though I do have it on the video. Yeah. I do have it on video. <laughs> but we did get it anyway. Yes, quickly. Okay, uh, so, 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 so I just want to draw a connection. Hoover was a 33rd degree mason. Yeah. All his Masonic regular regala is in that room up there. It's very important that we know that that was his his leaning, and that he's there on 16th Street, where the local temple is, and the house of the Mother Supreme is. Uh, very, very significant. Very, very significant. And this is going to go back. By the time they had Tony Brown follow up on Monday, he was talking about Marquette de Lafayette. And Lafayette's role in helping 
uh, the ragtag generals of Washington and them. And of course, in the Masonic Temple, which I got teed up, is your shot of the apron that uh, 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 Lafayette had on, which had what on it? Skull and bones, and that's excessively important. The Apollo mission was, in fact, an Osiris, Orion set of missions. Furthermore, the landing on the moon on July 20th, 1969, was timed so that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon when the key Orion constellation and Sirius were at a certain geometric angle above the horizon. Mm. And it was that key set of angles that is replicated over and over and over again in the other Apollo landings and their site selections. In the Mars landings on Mars during Viking, and when the photographs of the pyramids and face at uh, Sidonia were taken, and also when the pyramid room, the so-called Isis Sirius chamber at the end of that shaft, was opened in October of 1996. There's this stunning pattern. It's so obvious there's no way to explain it away. Mm. So it's obvious that somebody has figured out the meaning or what they think is the symbolic meaning behind this pattern. What they think, yeah. And what we now have to find out is what uh -huh. they think they've been doing all these years with our money and not telling us. This brings up the specter of the secret society connection. Okay. Graham Hancock has talked about a group of individuals called the Sons of Horus, the followers of Horus. When you go back and read the ancient pyramid texts, it basically describes, if you simply read the Egyptian writings and don't put a, a Western spin, mm -hmm. and think we're dealing with a bunch of ignorant primitive savages, yes. but literate people who knew their own damn history and were laying it out, yeah. right? If you read it as real stuff, they basically say that what Egypt was supposed to be was a reinvention of the first time, a rebuilding of a fabled civilization which had been destroyed. Okay. Very straightforward. Okay. And the pyramid complex at Giza was the encoding of the information on how to do it. The Egyptians, in their own tradition, their own text, say this. Of course, Western white guys look at this and say, ah, oh, a bunch of primitive nonsense. And they don't even, they, uh, frankly, I don't think that they understand it. And once they did understand it, understood the power, and uh, began to uh, misinterpret it purposefully. Or, uh, I'm, I'm glad you introduced it purposely, because I think they didn't misunderstand it. I think they got it, but they used the knowledge for sure. themselves. Okay. We're talking political spin doctoring here, okay. because knowledge is power. And yeah. so, so there's an in-group and an out-group. And see, Egyptologists, like planetary scientists, there's only four or five hundred in the whole damn world. <laughs> Tops. So you've got a small group of people. You can control a small group of people. Sure can. How do you control people? You basically make it a, make it a club. If you break cover, if you spill the beans, if you spill your guts, if you tell people what we really found, then you're no longer in the club, and you'll never have access to the real stuff ever again. Plus, it'll make your name look like a dog, whatever. Yeah. And so, who in their right mind is going to go against the political stricture of the stick and carrot? Mm -hmm. The carrot being the inside crowd, the real knowledge, the stick being, if you break cover and you tell the secrets, you'll never be allowed in again. And most people will go along with that. They want to be in. Because they want to be in. So, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at is a really amazing documented connection now between a young U.S. president who suddenly commits this nation to go where no one has gone before, Ooh. to the moon, yes. under the banner of an Egypt godhood which is Osiris, the, the patches and the lakes are astonishing, mm. fueled by his father's interest in something in the British Museum. Yes. You begin to get the picture. Yes. And a guy who was keeper of antiquities who four years before it's open predicts there's going to be a statue of a guy sitting in a room gazing at this particular star, which turned out to be the key star in the geometry at every uh, Apollo landing and, and take off from the moon. So the possibility which comes now to the fore as a, as a hypothesis, a working hypothesis, I'm not saying this is what's happened, just presenting this as a hypothesis, is that Graham Hancock is correct, that there was an enormous destructive thing that happened to our civilization circa 14, 13,000 years ago. Okay. And that there was, in the aftermath, a group of people formed, dedicated to rebuilding, to preserving knowledge.
knowledge, to picking up the pieces, to carrying on, which we've seen in other civilizations and other epochs is what human beings try to do. They try to go on. And that these folks have a much longer time horizon than most human beings plan for. But those, these people are thinking not in terms of a few years or a decade or 20 years or 100 years, but in terms of thousands of years. And that in fact, as part of this tradition, which would be handed from son to son to son to son to mm -hmm. son, and you'd be voted in and there'd be a selection process and there'd be initiation and all, a secret society mm -hmm. dedicated to building, to rebuilding, there was at some point certain things happened in history which may have been mandated by the leakage of knowledge hidden in archives, hidden in underground facilities all over the world from before the catastrophe. And then sometime in the last hundred years, the British found one of those archives and stole it from Egypt and took it back from the plateau to the British Museum. Mm -hmm. And that John Kennedy's father, Joseph Kennedy, got access to that and that John Kennedy when he became president realized that part of what they had found was a missive that there's critical new information left from our own civilization on the moon waiting to be rediscovered and that this was the reason for creating the whole massive 20 billion dollar phenomenon and telling none of and them. telling nobody anything now if I'm right then those guys were planning to go there, bring it home, and then somehow make it public. But something tragic happened. He was murdered. And what we can now chart within NASA is that the landing sites and their selection were key to this information because a key mysterious figure who comes out of the East, who comes out of Egypt and becomes a key role maker in NASA and helps pick the site selection of Apollo is none other than a, an Egyptian named Dr. Farouk El Baz. Mm -hmm. Who happened to be at Boston University, who came to Farrakhan's rescue when the march was called only 400,000, who got my man from Boston University and brought him down here. The man who knows the whole connection is who the minister called to get him down here to redo that crowd size and come up with 800,000. Yes, the minister, the dialogue goes that some people know of these interconnections and the rest have been denied access. Who after the Apollo program has ended in 72, goes back to Egypt and becomes a senior science advisor to Anwar Sadat. Where's mm -hmm. up what? And his brother is now on the senior staff of Hosni Mubarak. And Farouk Elbaz, who is the head of the remote sensing lab at Boston University, Just in fact, up came to the rescue of um, uh, uh, Lucas Farrakhan mm -hmm. when John Walker stood and everything. at the head of the Million Man March there on the steps of the Capitol and gave his speech. What no one knows is that his speech was studded with references to the same geometry we have found on Mars, in Egypt, and is all over Washington. Which is, then put the context in that the brother Hamza and I go off and do this lecture. Fiddling with this, fiddling with this diamond, the devil, the, uh, both of us went at it from our own angles. My angle became the tape called Base Theory on Evil, where I go back and lay that diamond out, go back to the concept of the Grease of Sphinx. When he goes up there, says, what does the damn thing look like? It got the body of a lion, the wings of a bird, and the face of a black man, which is the symbol of God that we looked at as the comedic Sphinx that the white boy then turned around and made a what? A guardian animal. Where the one, remember we said? The one says the one in Kemet was a picture of God, all-knowing, all-present. Right. which now is duplicated up someplace else. The other guy said, I'm the first philosopher because I know God not turn his sphinx into a guardian animal. And he said the most dangerous thing, the sphinx guard is what? The tree of knowledge, which was the tree of life, which was the essence of that information coded, right? You, you follow on these angles? Now, I ain't got all the answers. I just radiating angles. Yes, yes brother, quickly. Just a transition. What do we 
they talk about the catastrophic destruction, the Milky Way moves every 25,000 years, and along with that movement causes a replenishing of the Earth, uh, basically a reconfiguration or rechanging oscillation, oscillation of um, all elements in the universe. Basically, there's a rebalancing, and that rebalancing causes destruction. Back in the past, I was the whole destruction of the Babylon and the fall and the floods and so forth, the creation of the um, Grand Canyon also on Earth and so forth. So those things occurred many thousand years ago and which brings you down to the creation of Adam and Eve, which is really a replenishing period or better yet a recreation to rebreed and re-put people on the planet again. So that's what that whole thing was. And that's what they were trying to get back to. How many of you all got this videotape based theory on evil? How many of y'all got it at Easter Mark? No, it's not Easter Mark. This is one in Florida A&M where we lay up the uh, 1010, the diamond and all that. So look, I'm, uh, when we're in Easter Market in December, I don't have it as good as I get it by March. Anyway, I'm going to raffle this tape off. Anybody interested in winning this in a raffle? I'll raffle this tape off because the, the visuals, the thing is, is that what, they, they eventually bring Tony, Tony uh, Browder on, and they go back to this, and he came, he said the comedic word for this, which is, for the Sphinx, the comedic word. The, the Sphinx is the green thing, uh, like yeah, Osiris, Horus, yeah, all that. Yeah, anyway, you hear what I mentioned? I got it keyed up. But, yeah, there we go. Say it, Brother Charles. Haramaku. Uh, Haramaku. That, they're now all going back to this, trying to pick up the translation, which I'm telling you now, it's going to take them back to the number nine. It's going to take them past the guardian animals. It's going to take them over into the chair. Remember, we went to this dialogue, chair up cherubs and cherubim and the angels all over the place uh angels in the outfield i looked up some more angels they had a play out called caveman white folks got to flick out caveman uh angels in the outfield uh uh, uh two angels two journeys in london and new york two more plays about angels uh uh the, uh, angel michael michael remember it's the, the phrase is michael is an angel not a saint <laughs> and then interestingly enough go back to Disney and Lion King notice how the lion I think the way the Lion King's face is looking up in the stars in a certain direction uh, I think I need to go back to the movie now this is Disney Eisner connection and go back and look at the star movement is in that Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, that's interesting. I, I haven't seen it, but uh, you saw the footage. Uh, 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 okay. Yes, sir, so what you need? Oh, sister, get to you. Uh, those who want to raffle, uh, make sure you let sister know. Now, 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 now. So my point is, is that where we stand uh, from the magazine civilization, where whites admit they know not their history. See, the white guy eventually goes on to say, look. The disagreement between the races is the essence of this information. We took it another way. That, that My version is based theory on evil. Uh, um, Remagnifying, uh, Diop's two cradle theory, uh, 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 Leonard Jeffrey's sun people versus the ice people, the quest for fire shit. All of that argument about the origins of these two separate bodies. I told you everywhere I go, I ask the white kids, where did you come from? <laughs> they have all, remember in Georgetown, you all the women in Georgetown. You all they had all different answers, right? They had, a, they had a Mesopotamia, I come from the black man, I come from Africa, I come from the Garden of Eden. It was all over the place. There was no uniformity. Right, and the, but, the, but the white scientists haven't been able to link white people to the chain of human development. That's what... The Civilization article in March, April of 96 says that if you call yourself Irish, if you call yourself Jewish, you have no way of knowing where your ethnicity fits in the chain of human development. Based theory on evil. Two uniquely different groups of people coming forth with two uniquely different attitudes about life and reality. That's why we said, whether it be Yaku in the oven, or whether it be a Genesis, whether it be evolution, any strategy or dialogue to deal with the origin of white was just as good as any. To say Yaku made them in the oven was just as good a theory as any other, again, because they were the people 
the people who created milk to account for their birth because they were, remember what it says here in this book, Romulus and Remus, a neat way for accounting for the coming forth of a race with no known origin. The myths that they used to bring about the, and it's interesting how each one of the sets of myths in here, they have a whole set of myths to deal with different aspects about themselves that they couldn't explain. The Romulus and Remus is in a section called In the Beginning. Right, this is called Roman mythology. Uh, again, the principle being, and that's what the role of the base theory, I carry that tape wherever I go. The base theory on evil. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to the tape. A sacred geometry. Yes. And no one understood what Farrakhan was saying. And when the Department of Interior missed That's when you know we went right back here into that speech. Hey, that was a lot of speech. Who did Farrakhan turn to to save his bacon and in fact assess the correct number? Save his bacon. Dr. L. Boz. Who of course is heir to this tradition and this geometry by way of Egypt and God knows what else. You begin to get the picture, Dick, the picture was pretty astonishing going on here, and there's an in crowd and an out crowd, and the out crowd is not supposed to know any of this. Mm. But Farrakhan stood up there and he began to reveal certain things between the lines for reasons that I would like to find out more about. What is, Which is what we did. What did we do? We stepped in and intercepted this conversation that wasn't being discussed anywhere. Even, remember what we went back, Million Man March, we came right back here. The white press did not get into the dialogue of the number 19, the size of the steps, the size of the monument, the Hiram Abyss, the master, they left it all out. We, we talked about that right here, something strange was on. That's what started us leading into that, going back into that speech. Remember the, the number 400,000? being representing the number four with the number four remember we went back Earth. what did we get out of the grecian sphinx Earth. that the number four and the nine squares and the grecian sphinx and the 72 squares on the pyramid and all seeing eye on the dollar all had something to do with the tetragrammation right. which yeah. was what the hidden unspoken name of god yeah. right so they're coming back to this sphinx. This sphinx is with this black face and this lion body is driving them wild to get to the, as my guy said, if we could find out the essence of this, we might just straighten up the race question, right? Mm -hmm. We always said we was hunting for the beast. Let's go straighten up the race question. It's the hunt the beast. The hunt that is the beast is going to clarify the race question, right? And the essence of that hunt was so you're right. The essence of the hunt was, was that as they've all gone their wrong way to describe whatever that is, we still stand right up in a cup with a, I'm not the comedic man. I don't have the comedic knowledge. I'm just, I'm, I've gone with you backwards with this thing. We've gone through the whites backwards with this thing. And now we're dabbling with these societies, the nine squares, the nine squares. Squares of New Haven, Connecticut, the Gold of Mendes, which Brother Hamza brought back, the Yoda upside down, the diamond being, the luminous being, or Illuminati, the unconquerable stone. Where is the center of the diamond? In fact, you remember, let's go back. Let's go back. You all were right here in this room, some of you, when we started to, to catch the devil. The devil lives in D.C. We're, we're going to Meridian Hill Park. We're running around here like fucking fools trying to establish that some hairy shit is going on up in here. And I deviated from the original discussion just to say in this way while they all pushing that we're sitting on something we got to go back to. Which is why we got to go back to the house of the Mother Supreme. We got to go, I told you last week, we got to go back to Meridian Hill Park. Now, I need you to show you the tape where the brothers who were the cameramen went out to Meridian Hill Park and put the compasses back out into the park. Now, I saw this book on Manly Palmer Hall. This is all Manly Palmer Hall's literature, the Philosophic Society. All his literature is here. And he has a set of poems. And one of the, and this is posters here, but what does that say right there, Charles, under that picture with the circles within a circle in it? Say it out. Oh, I'm sorry, but. 
What does it say? Dante's And what do you see in the picture? Looks like looks like the head of something. It's a series of what? Circles. Series of circles, what? Series of circles within a circle, right? So those, I'm going to pass this picture around. It looks like a UFO up above. Yeah, it looks like a UFO up above, right? This is the picture right here. I can only hold it up to you. This is the picture, and this is a poster that you can get from Manly Palmer Hall. It's this one right here, the circular one, and it says, Key to Dante's D.C. And what was, what, what, where is Dante's statue at? Uh, can you get it? Malcolm X. It, 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 at Malcolm X, Meridian Hill Park. Is that, and what did Dante write? And what was the inferno about? Which was the how many layers of hell? Nine. Nine layers of hell that were guarded by Griffin. The dawn of the full moon. Brother Say is coming out on Dante, which was like the movie Seven. This is the thing, Key to Dante's DC. That little some this little poster right here. Which, is, which I believe is in Matthew Palmer Hall's book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. I'm going to bring that picture in here next week, this picture right here. You see where I'm coming to? Circles within a circle. A wheel in the middle of a wheel. In the middle of a wheel. Yes. Now, we've been fumbling with this dialogue. Now, those brothers go out to Meridian Hill Park, and they come back with the longitude, latitudes, and some vectors and sectors and other things. I ain't into ge geometry, but they went back to showing about what runs right through Washington. Let me see if you can get this, buddy. Uh, we got to go, we got to pull out longitudes and latitudes. Now, I'm pulling out all my maps. I got those restricted flight maps of D.C. I found my West Coast maps over the desert where all the restricted areas and stuff, but I got a D.C. flight map. Uh, uh, area map that shows the restricted areas, land and air. Uh, got uh, now, so, so, you remember what happens when you go to Meridian Hill Park? There's that plaque on the wall. What's that plaque say? There's a little plaque on the wall there. The center line is located in the middle of 16th Street. It says the what? The center line is located in the middle of 16th Street. And it says that, but, but the little plaque says 52 feet Nine inches from here is the midpoint. Now remember, Thomas Jefferson wanted to make this the midpoint for the world, and it was until they had the conference in the late 1800s in England, and they had the conference here in Washington that switched it to Greenwich, England. I have told you, we need to know the dynamics of that conference because that conference had something significant go on that had to do with the rise of British gentry or the made men versus the uh, born men. Uh, because that was the rise of the secret society of Rose and Rothschild, 1890s. Blue That's them coming on. The circle within a circle. So to switch it from here to make it there was very significant. Now, Let's go back to the guy who read it. Uh, I know um, uh, Mr. Gregory has to leave in, in a few minutes. Now listen, so if he can't leave, let me, though. Uh, make at least a closing comment or ask a question uh, of Richard Hoagland while uh, the time you have remaining, and then we'll get to our telephone lines. Yeah, one of the things I would like, first I'd like to thank you, my brother. Is, yeah, I think Gregory asked him, if you had a magic wand, what would you do? Nobody else in the whole planet has. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, when you in Washington D.C., have you ever been by what is now known as Malcolm X Park, but it's called Meridian Park? No, I have not. When we go by there, I need to take you there, because it's on 16th Street. Yeah. If you stand in the center of Meridian Park and walk straight, you'll get the White House in half. Interesting. Now, if you keep walking straight, you'll get the pyramids in half. Okay. Oh. Let me go back. Let me go back. He's asleep in the park. Yeah. Right, right. Listen up now. Well, uh, again, thank Kathy Hughes for this type of platform that nobody else in the whole planet has. Who else uh, in the route to take it? Uh, right. uh, when you in Washington, have you ever been by what is now known as Malcolm X Park, but it's called Meridian Park? No, I have not. When we go by there, I need to take you there, because it's on 16th Street. Yeah. If you stand in the center of Meridian Park and walk straight, you'll get the White House in half. Interesting. Now, if you keep walking straight, you'll get the pyramids in half. Okay. Oh. Oh. All right. Now, well, uh, let me stop.
stop you there. You know that Washington was laid out by Lon Fon. Yes. You know that one of the headquarters of this secret society, the followers of Horace, is in France. Yes. Lon Fon was part of the plan. Yes. Did you know that the Statue of Liberty is really in Hill House? In New York Harbor, a few miles from me here. Good morning. It came from France, but it was originally designed to go to Cairo to be Isis, mm. to be the goddess whose star shone at the key angles over the landing sites on the moon, wow. and whose star we calculated the angles in terms of the opening of the secret chamber. Well, I know the point of the Statue of Liberty had nothing to do with bring me your feet. It had a, 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 a picture of a, anybody a, 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 in the United Breaking the chain. One. She is Isis. Anybody yes. else in the United States? And Quinn won. And he said it here, matter of fact, he, the, the, the rich guy over in France said it here as a tribute to John Brown. It was supposed to go to Cairo. Wow. Incredible. And then, now, the, the, the person who's provided me this information, and that's the subject of their next book, is Robert Bavall, working oh, with Graham Hancock. Co -author, yes. Yes, co-author of the, of the Message of the Sphinx, which is a book that followed Fingerprints of the God. Incredible. Yeah. There is an enormous database here, and we got to follow the trail, Dick, because at the, at the end of the road, there is who we are and why we're all at each other's throats when, in fact, we are all together. Yes. Well, and we've got to be together to look at what is going on. Uh, two things. You know, all my life you've been hearing about legends of the Sphinx, you know, the legend, one legend, and whoever asks the question of the great Sphinx and presses his ear, to the lips of the Sphinx uh, uh, will receive the answer. So, you know, down through the years, you hear it is so That's Dick Alpha reaching out there, right? Oh, yeah. Now, now, what did we learn about the Grecian Sphinx in the number nine? That it deals with the legend of Oedipus, which was, and here we go, this is Dante's statue here. Dick is a Sphinx, right? Huh? Dick is a Sphinx. Yeah, he's, a, he's Alpha, out. He's a Sphinx right? man, right. So, so he comes up with this, you know, this thing has been perpetrating all this time about that you put your lips to the ear of the Sphinx or something, something, whatever. And so he, he's alluding to, and this is a shot of Meridian, I ain't never let this video out before. Ooh. This is uh, from Meridian Hill Park, but I'm going to go back to where that midpoint is on the back side of the Meridian Hill house. And the statue of Dante, uh, here we go here. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Remember okay. the Italian part of the park? Okay. Remember last week I said that? French and Italian. On the edges of Dante. Can you get a shot of this book that he's holding in his hand, Mr. Dent? He's an ugly looking sucker. <laughs> now, you ought to see it the best you can. Come on, get the camera once a night. Come on, get the camera once a night. 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 Once a and the landing dates and enterprise and all of that. Here we got the statue of John Buchanan. Now Buchanan's statue was there too. A few steps from Dante. Now on the outside of that park is the flat. Uh, that says 52 feet 9 inches from here is the spot. Now across from Meridian Hill Park, where you got Dante, in fact, across from Meridian Hill Park, is the Meridian Hill House. Right. Uh, and what's that street up there that goes around like that? Crescent, Crescent Street. Crescent Street is a as a one way in, one way out street. So it only leads you, you only come back to it. But back there is where we found the headquarters of the committees on foreign relations. That was right next to the Meridian Hill House, that was next to the to the Meyer House which was the house that Eugene Meyer had bought for his family up there. Now, this is the layout of the park. Now, that's Dante's Inferno. That's from the Cliff Notes, this circular looking through a hole by hell through the layers. Now, the Cliff Notes. importance about the layers of the park. How many layers? The park is laid out like the description of hell. You can see that in the famous seashells, which you usually you find on the money, you find it on the corners of all the Masonic temples, or masonically built buildings, you see that seashell which represents the white race, which was trapped Ooh. in the bottom of the ocean, uh, in, in a clam. 
and you know, once rescued out of the water, they were opened up uh, a blurry and slimy and ugly and pale. They were brushed up and cleaned and turned into a pearl. And you're about that shell, that slimy, stinky, ugly, pale-looking pearl that's hidden inside of the clam trapped at the bottom of the ocean. If you ask any mason what that clam means, you'll notice they're a mason because they can't tell. Because the clam is very important. Even when you go on the Masonic tour and you ask what's in that clam, they can't tell. That's one of the deepest secrets. Mm. But on the seal of the city of Chicago is that clam with a white baby in the center called Babe and Pearl. And that's what it is, Chicago. And I busted on that seal. That got to be a big issue when all the way New York Times, uh, it's right before Harold Watson died, the week before he died. Mm. He was going to put through Sabo on the seal, but the white, two, two, two black aldermen had snatched it from me and threw it out in the public, mm. trying to rhyme with my issue. Because after mm. Columbus Day, mm. they knew it get white mm. mad. The whole you thing about getting the beast all mad stuff. It says on its door in brass, the uh, American... In the front of this tape, when well, I show you this, I'm going to take you back to the front of the tape and show you a point of the diamond, which is across the street from my house. Some of you all are taking over there, David and Juan. Some of you all come across the street. The little fence in there area with the point that matters to lay which actually has something to do here. The Meyer House, the Meridian, Crescent Street just goes up. You can leave here and drive up there and around. But we got to go back out there with some equipment. But I want to show you the spot back there. That's right inside the fence. They have the, uh, what is it like a compass on the ground. Washington Post today. Her name is you, Catherine Mike. And this is looking from an angle, looking back up at those places. We're going to walk up there, we're going to walk up there, uh, as we're walking through parts of the park, it's got little faces up in different areas where oh, they right took there, away right things. There, right there, right there, on the face again, go back, let's go back. No, I've seen something. Now, that was the point I was trying to say. Yeah, those steps are real, right, yeah, yeah, right up in here, it looked kind of yeah. weird up in there. Right, right there, down. right there. What you can't see is that the face of the neck is a hole. 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 And we tried. We lifted up that little thing in the ground, and it was a pool of water down there, like a little sewer system. Right there. We lift. And notice this has got nine. This has got nine triangles on it. Nine triangles. Nine triangles. Nine triangles. Nine triangles. Now that stairway, we counted the stairs. There's like 81 stairs all together. And everything is laid out. Now, this is, this is, this is a, look at here. This is the headquarters of the Committees on Foreign Relations. So we talk about the CFR being the extension of the secret society. Where did they put the office that coordinates all their offices? Well, that's the white grand man house there. At the Meridian House International, you still see the flag next to it. Right, we must have just left that flag. And they got the lion thing just like it has at the uh, Masonic Temple. Okay, now this is the Meridian here house where uh, we asked the guy to let us in. Uh, he comes out. He goes in and brings us some brochures and stuff. This is in a fenced-in area up on Crescent Street. And there he goes, he comes out, the Mexican guy, and uh, he goes in and gets some brochures and stuff. We can see if something was inside, there's a statue in that window facing the inside. <laughs> uh, different uh, honors given on the uh, plaque there. There's this section here right in the back, uh, behind the Meridian Hill House, where you look through the fence. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. And I ain't got the freeze to be able to stop it. That's the midpoint. That is 52 feet 9 inches from that plaque on the wall. This is in the ground. And when we looked up there, Donald Brazil was up there taking somebody on a tour. Worked for uh, Holmes North. Let me go back. Now this is it. This is a fenced area in the back of the Meridian Hill House. It's this little mark, and 
Why you all need, and you all seen this before? No. How do you get here from 16th Street? You just you come up the back. Right no, no, no. Just walk, the back. walk up Crescent Street. Either yeah. side you go on, it'll lead you to perfect back. Right. Now see that back there? This looks like the cover of the book on the Kabbalah that I have. To have this layout on the design, that's what that looks like there. He's marking the point. Now we need to get a compass over that spot. And this is the back side. This is the back side of the Meridian International Center. The question is, what is the purpose of the Don't they got a double fence? In the back. You got a fence and a fence. And a chain on the double fence. On Saturday and Sunday between 2 and 5. Right across the street from the... There's a point. That design right there. We need a better picture of that. We need to shoot it from the inside. This house is probably more up the point. Now see this say 17th Street right here? I think this part... Remember, the point is somewhere between 16th and 17th. So when you get to the top, it's 1800 East West Highway. Since we know it ain't 16th Street, it's between 16th and 17th. Probably somewhere in this house is marking a deep meridian spot. But yeah, somewhere in that Meridian Hill house, we think, is something. It's bounded up. You ought to be able to go from the park up. It ought to be a chain to go from the park through the Meridian Hill house. When we walk down the walkway, you're going to see that the all of the committees in the 35 cities that have the, uh, that have the committees on foreign relations are worked out uh, right out of this location over here. We might be somewhere close to some, some beastly snippet. <laughs> Here we are uh, on the other flip side of the Meridian House International, Meridian International. Now we got to go. And we look up on the round the wall of the mine. Now this has the Central Back Bay Wall. Remember, we went back to the word atonement, the sacrifice of college, the gold, all that shit. I'm telling you, we walked up on some dumb shit. Really, played with it a little bit. But if you would have walked the country, then there was very few who walked up on that uh, intercepted dialogue between the whites of Farrakhan over the tomb of D.C. Yes. Huh? Oh, 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 just one second. Let me see if I go back again. Just one, just one second. This is, uh, and I ain't got the freeze. Committees on Foreign Relations, 1623 Belmont Street. Belmont. We're now talking about the that brings in all the committees on foreign relations in America who are aligned with the committees on foreign relations. Who would line up on the Meridian? Who's the other opposite as England? CFR here, Royal Institute of International Affairs there. And they must form some angle. We gotta go, we gotta pull the globe back out. Come right to the upper point of that diamond. Somewhere where we marked it. We went straight out. You saw that mark again. Hold on one second, Juan, I'll come right back to you. Okay, so thought that was interesting that that was back there. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back to the front of the film. Javari, you were with us that day. Go back to the front of that film where we started off on the point of the diamond. The fence stand area of the daughter of the, who put that there? The daughters of the American Revolution. Who put that there, that fence stand area that marked, and there were how many stones that made the diamond? 40. 40. And there were how many on each side? So that's why I come up with that 10 by 10, right? Okay. And the person who, if you get into that base theory on evil tape, uh, you'll find it very, very important. Now, now, this is going to rewind, but I got this key to one more thing I got to show you because you got to go right back to Indianapolis. Let me just show you this a second. And their center street is called Meridian Street. The same people that laid out D.C. laid out the capital of Indiana, which is in Indianapolis. Now, remember we went there, we put this film together, but look at here, this is the Meridian Street, looking right up the center of Meridian, what do we come up with? The monument, you come up with the war memorial, which looks like Solomon's Temple, and then you come up with the center of the Meridian of the Midpoint. This is the center of Indianapolis. That's where, Jack, that's where Michael Jackson is from. Gary, from Gary, Indiana. Okay, okay. Gary. <laughs> and see, I got to turn a little this way. 
Like you're just going to see all these things are laid side by side in Indianapolis. Right? And I got all these films. In L.A., the Masonic Temple goes from George Washington, starts with Imhotep, and ends with George Washington. Albert Pike is in the middle. He's a statue going around the Masonic Temple in L.A. Wilshire and Crenshaw, the main black street. Inside was the replication of Solomon's Temple, but it's really the, the war memorial that is in. It's inside the war memorial. Just like the House of the Most Supreme, right. Then you walk up, right there, the Masonic Temple of, the Scottish Rite Temple of Indianapolis is right there on the meridian. Right, right, the House of George Washington. Notice, look at the lions up front, the shield. I gotta run this fast. Well, I gotta run this fast because I just want to see. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's how the original monument was. was lined up. It was in front of the paws of the. Oh, of, uh, right. Right, 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 right. Watch it, man. Watch it now. Now we gotta get into where this is facing. We've gotta get into the longitude and the latitude. That's the center. That's the meridian. That's what's just in the center of Indianapolis. Everything goes around it. It's called Monument Circle. The whole town comes down to a circle. So what, what, what happens in Indianapolis? Again, remember what I told you. Indianapolis is North Street, East Street, West Street, and South Street. What is D.C.? Eastern, Western, Northern, Southern. All them corners around that diamond are all those. And the diamond ain't but the square. Uh, uh, Indianapolis is the circle within a square. Because the square, the east, north, west, south street, squares in the monument circle, which is the center. And I need to take my map of that and throw it up on the overhead so that you can look at the placement. And all the streets lead downtown. And all the streets in Come right there to the And all the buildings are shaped circular, like the Navy building, that little area where the Negro women just moved up in there. Uh, yeah, a uh, uh, post office, uh, uh, Navy headquarters, all that is up in there. Yeah, it gets curvature. Uh, oh, okay. This can't be the front yet. Are we there already? This is, uh, uh back at the Diamond. Oh, my. This is, uh, across the street from where I live. This is the, uh... Damn, let me just see. I've been prepared for the Diamond. This is the top, what they call Minerva. The cornerstone, the top stone on the Diamond. 1800 East West Highway separates Silver Spring from Washington, D.C. There it is right there. It's right off the highway, just right off the edge of the curve. A 1791 Benjamin Banneker put it there. Which was the ad at this time of the day. So we are No, Minur. M E N H I R. It means a nine foot stone. Because the Minurs were all nine foot. Even though you only see the top coming out the ground, it's a nine foot stone. Each of the 40 markers were nine feet in length. Right in the stone. See, notice the point is marked by a little hole in the top. 
There's the marking line, marking the separation between the two. Like Eric Conn, the wrestler was getting great. He earned the dividing line. In fact, the camera man wins that one leg in D.C. and other legs in Maryland. Right, and here you can see... And Steve has also been sold in Alexandria. You're right. 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 You're
control station. What is a control station? And the number, just a number. In Laurel, oh, in Laurel, in summer 23, or five. Washington, Burberry, Fannin, Laurel, there's no such thing. Maryland, Montgomery County got their own oh, district. That's right. That's monument control, folks. And this matches the... And every time that thing is had graffiti on it, I swear to God, that shit has ain't been on there 24 hours. Hello? I watch them la Latino kids come up there and they write on it sometimes. The little brothers... Now, notice the, notice the streets there are what? Portal Drive. Now, remember, Portal was the entranceway to something. Uh, the Boulay logo says, over look at 81, 8116. 8116 and, and Portal Drive. And the Boulevard is right there on the corner. Jesus. Something happened to Black. 8116. That something might be done. I ain't got to. I put the freeze on like I hook all this up together, buddy. And they're, they're 81. There it is there. North Portal. Seven. Seven. So we end up in the same place anyway. We seven and nine. Also. Remember that on 16th Street, there were seven smokes around that cornerstone, and there were nine hooks in between each, which leads you back to seven again. Okay. Now, uh, oh, okay, that's Meridian Hill. That's leading into the park. And where is Daniel Webster's statue at? Uh, it's in the park. Dante is in the park. Daniel Webster. I don't know where Webster at. I think he's around 16th Street. Oh, I ain't seen him yet. <laughs> but there's Webster Street, I believe, up in there. I don't want yeah, yeah. to try to be funny. No, that's not Here is the stone, uh, Washington, blah, 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 52 feet, 9 inches from this tablet. So that's where we go back. You, if you walk up the side, you got to do it, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, approximately. I mean, man, I, was, I almost got hit out there looking at that center line for that marker that was over in there. But, but that was the thing where we had to think about the picture, man. We could never get the picture. No, you were supposed to have shot the picture that had the dot on it, which eventually is what led me to that thing behind there. Now, that, that thing behind Meridian Hill on, the, with the double fence, with the dot within the circle, that, that thing right there. That thing right there. So, so anyway, I'm telling y'all, yeah. we got to fucking go back out there. Yeah. That's Joan of Arc right there in the middle of Meridian Hill Park. Is Joan of Arc, who was a witch that was burned at the stake. What the fuck you doing with Dante on hell and the witch burned at the stake and John Buchanan, who was a big time corrupt Masonic president. That locked up niggas or some shit. Yeah, the reason she might like made slavery back in effect. And they wanted to make the original Lincoln Memorial there. Pope who did the Masonic Temple, and it was a it was a tomb. It was a pyramid that was supposed to sit. I could picture in Tony Browner's book where the pyramid is supposed to sit with a sphinx on it sit right in Meridian Hill Park. When, uh, when Dante was exiled... That's me reading into Dante's book by what he said. He lived the rest of his life in France. Um, in addition, uh, when we were there the last time, there was a tour guy, and um, we referred to, uh, to the park as looking like Emerald City from the Wizard of Oz. Right. And he'd jump back and say, how did you hear about that? And then, he, um, and then like a week or two later, we went to, uh, to a meeting downtown where they actually were laying out D.C. and they referred to it as the end of the city. And also at the same time... And go back to your boy David. When we were there making a... Um, when we were there asking him the question, um, he said, well, the key question about the, uh, the whole thing about the park was... I remember doing a little bit about Joe and the Bark. You know, Joe and the Bark. Like, 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 um, like Florence, can we return... Like, can we return to Florence like the good old days? Mm. Oh, that's heavy, that's heavy. It up. Yes, yes. Now hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. Now remember, hold on, hold on. Now remember, hold on, sister. Remember, you go to the George Washington Masonic Memorial. On the eighth floor, Knights of Templar, is the black hand coming out of the sky. Ooh. This is the this is the floor before that with the aprons with skull and bones on it, right? We go to that ninth floor. We go to the ninth floor, and that's the black hand with the white with the white Jesus. Reaching up to the black hand coming out the sky. Now y'all have to lean together to see it. Unless if you've seen it, you don't need to see it. Right? Remember that picture, right? Then what's on the 
my floor. Remember, this is me now. This was in the base theory on you. Now remember now, so what's on the ninth floor? The white boy got the Grecian Sphinx. What the black boy got? The Grecian Sphinx. Right. Right? So, so I hooked this up into the Boulay convention tape because the connection was, here we are at the George Washington Masonic Memorial. They dropping triangles everywhere. They recreate Solomon Temple. Then the Grecian Sphinx guards Solomon. This is the top of the George Washington in Alexandria. Again, all of these things we're set across. What all do they mean? Hey, oh, but, but we're on to something and we can't let it go. Now Baltimore said the street is light street. Got the huge got a commercial legend about the merger between uh, Pepco and B and G and E. And remember that Pepco employs not community. Remember Pepco was the most racist company in this area. Had to sign a hundred and forty million dollar consent decree because they was racist bastards. But she there advocating this unity based on the fact that they're good for the community. Don't get it. I got that thing. I'm gonna play it, buddy. So, uh, okay, just remember that now. Remember that's on the ninth floor there, right? Right? Who's at the head of a goat up in the Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like a goat or a cow head yeah. or something like that. And then remember, we went to the ninth square of New Haven. I don't know what part of this tape this is. This is uh, uh, the video from uh, Yale University. When we up there at the ninth square the year ago around the day. Up at Yale trying to get through the stuff up there where the city of the nine squares. This is right outside the president's office. Of course, that's in the cafe. That's a whole nother thing. Remember when we went to the Masonic Temple a couple weeks ago, not only was it the white guy that you pictures in front of us, but one of the things we saw was the apron that Lafayette wore, which was very important. That's the apron that Lafayette wore that's on downstairs. That we're downstairs, that, that, that's Lafayette, Marquette de Lafayette. And there's his apron. What's on the apron, but my color bone, color bone, that key, that key, Lafayette. Nope, but he got the three triangles. That's the signal of FEMA. That's the uh, fallout, the civil disturbance signal. The three down triangles. You see it on it? Yeah. Right on there. Oh, no. we come back. Okay. What's up, Lee? Yeah. Yeah. And Washington right next door. Well, let's go back there. Right up in there. The three triangles. See that? It's also part of a Masonic oh, area. Them three triangles right there. With a circle, that's the old uh, thing for FEMA. Oh. Uh, I've got a couple of FEMA things over there too. Very significant. Again, so, again, I don't know what everybody up to. And remember back to this video, Holy Blood, Holy Grail. All the churches of Europe are laid out diametrically by strategic measurements that lay out the goal of Mendes. The Holy Blood, Holy Grail guy, I think it's going to come on the radio soon. Uh, but remember, he took all the churches of Europe and showed that they're all on mountains, the key foundation, and he laid them up by angles, found out they were all 90 miles apart, yeah. all over Europe, wow. all across every ethnic group, every nationality, every language. You can look and see six different languages, six different churches, all of them 90 miles apart. Wow. Now, that only means that all of these are like all of that. We just got to go back. We got to pull, we got we to gotta pull up the map. That's all buddy got. We got to pull up maps, we got we to gotta pull them together. Now, two things. I gotta pull the raffle, uh, but I gotta pass the hat first. And uh, please, if anybody, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, I wanna pass these out. These are uh, these are about WOL. These are pieces uh, Hamza put out a while back about how bad WOL was. I don't want him to take his words back because we still want to catch this devil. Remember that was the original flyer I was telling you about where we put Armstrong Williams. And uh, put Armstrong Williams out as the Negro of the month, and Kathy Hughes as the witch. This is, of course, uh, enhanced my being banned on WOL. Right, Armstrong got his own show. Remember this, flyer, yes. Also, don't forget that the way that the long height from Mars and the pyramid-type objects all form a Mendy, a Mendy also. Oh, excellent, excellent. In fact, I'm going to turn the tape back on with him and Dick Gregory go back to it. Uh, and 
I'm glad Brother Scotty come. I know we're gonna make that hundred dollar donation tonight. Brother Tom, I know we're gonna make that hundred dollar donation. I appreciate you, Bob, because what? Listen, I'm telling you all. If you could ever help, I need your help tonight. Write a check, anything. I went to Springfield down there. Every one of them checks, them people wrote bounce. Oh, that was all that was messed up. I don't know what was going on. Black man named o Dr. Osiris Victory Skywell. His shit bounce. This man come in dignified. I can roll this shit. This shit bounce. <laughs> Big time. Anyway, uh, again, if you can't help, please, I, I need your help tonight. I'm going to pass the hat. We're going to pull the raffle. Uh, uh, also, if you remember, there was another list up here about W.O.L. and the magic numbers. What 1450 really means. Oh. And how sinister it all was. I only got one of these. I only got one more now, y'all. I only got one. I only got one of these. This is uh, another Hamzo flyer against W.O.L. And I know some day everybody get one. At least make sure everybody got one. And then here he had put uh, Anton LaVey with Kim Novak on the back. Oh, yeah. I think that's supposed to be something about the devil and Kathy Hughes or something. About the Sally Riggler show. Who's still on on Saturday? Sally Riggler. She's white. She's white. She's white. But, 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 uh, remember Hamza has uh, transgressed from the family. He's made amends. Uh, 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 well, anyway. Uh, but I want to get that into the record. I know he's uh, packing them in over there. He's doing great. Uh, I see. And that's what you can do. Yeah, hold on, Bob. Hold on. Hold on. Anyway, anyway, listen up. So I'm going to pass the hat now. I'm going to do it quickly. And uh, then I'm going to pull the raffle. Then I'm going to ask you a couple questions about appropriate time to go to the temple. Uh, also a time to go to Meridian Hill Park, which could be on the weekend. Uh, even if you want to make it uh, this weekend. Monday. Anyway, Monday. Huh? Monday is good. Oh, no, I ain't got to that yet. So I'm going to pass that first. Yes, brother. You want to know what? You want a $100 check and make it out to nobody? Take an order of blank. Anyway, uh, anybody for the hat pack? I appreciate you. Anything you can do, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all very much. I'm, I'm thank you all very much. I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you all very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you all. Huh? All right. I appreciate you all very much. Really, whatever it is, I I couldn't tell you how knucklehead position I'm in. Uh, uh, trying to do. I'm still trying to pay. You know what? I said the same thing too. Right. Anybody? I'll come up that way. I'll come up that way. Hey, Steve, we're going to find, yeah. we're gonna find the word Berkshire within all this also. Berkshire. What Berkshire? Berkshire. What's Berkshire? Berkshire has London or Britain overtones, and also there's been ritual killing around Berkshire. You got, like he mentioned, Blair Apartments. Blair, what is Berkshire? What Ber is Berkshire is like the Blair Apartments. You have Berkshire Apartments. Oh, Ritualistic God. killing uh, around the word okay. Berkshire. Berkshire has written over the Remember. Anybody? Anybody I missed? Thank you all very much. In fact, it was a it was a woman that was killed around the Berkshire apartment. A, a black sister years ago. Her name was Cynthia Rod. Berkshire apartment. You remember that? Huh? And the killer has not been found to this day. Okay, he was not. Uh, uh, and thank all uh, those of you who brought transparencies and those of you who brought the blank tapes. Uh, book. Somebody donated the uh, 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 the Tony Brown book. Well, I had a little piece on the Sphinx that I wanted to get into, but I can't get into now because I just got. Uh, uh, so many other places I need to go. I didn't even get a chance to get into the meeting. Oh, 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 oh. The uh, meeting, um, uh, uh, the meeting about, uh, which is tomorrow. Where's that meeting at tomorrow? The dialogue meeting with Mary and Barry and the... What? Convention Center tomorrow at uh, 6 o'clock. Is that right? Anybody know what time that meeting is? It's free and open to the public. You might want to go. The dialogue meeting at the ADL, an American Jewish Committee not wouldn't coming. come to. Not coming. I, I know, I know, but it's still going to be a meeting. It's tomorrow. Huh? Yeah, but they just two people out of a hundred people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Get up out of them. Just it invited to damn be snow way. I even appreciate C. Miles for calling them perpetrating suckers. For cause we, flimsy,